Hi everybody, my name is Lo Hathaway. I'm a trainer here at Iconics Fitness, and today I'm super stoked to be with my two favorite people in the whole world, Holly and Adam. Today we're here to stretch, activate, honor, and celebrate your body. So we will go through all of those things, but the primary goal is just to get you to connect. And if you can't connect, you cannot activate, you cannot be where you are. So that is what we're gonna start with, and we're gonna start with that through our breath. So we're gonna have two body assessments to start this. First, I'm gonna have you lay down and breathe and walk through a grounding breath, and then I'm gonna have you stand up and do some split squats. So we will start with the breath. I'm gonna have you guys lay down. So I want you guys to get comfy, have your legs and arms out, lay however you are, whatever feels good to you. All right, and what I want you to do is take an inhale through your nose, super gentle, and exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, and while you do this, feel where there's any tension trapped in your body, anything that might feel stuck or like pain is just energy that needs to be moved and that's what we're trying to get you to do. So for this next breath, what I want you to think about is energy coming up through the ground, through your legs, through your pelvis, abdomen, heart, throat, and coming out of your mouth. So think of it like a circle where you're inhaling through your nose, it comes up and then you exhale it out. Inhale it, come up. And exhale it out. Now I'm going to have you put your hands on your chest, hands on your heart. Same breath, same gentleness. Take this time to honor exactly where you are. So whatever's going on in your body, don't judge it. Don't try to change it. Just let it be what it is. Let your breath guide you, let your breath move through you. And in every single stretch or exercise we do, I wanna keep the same breath and I wanna keep the same non-judgment. So we're not trying to change anything, we're just trying to honor where we are and be in our body and see what magical things can come of that. So I'm gonna have you do a final breath. Get back into your body and when you're ready, stand up. How do you feel, sir? Great, yeah? All right, we are gonna go into split squats as our second body scan. So we'll do this in the beginning, we'll do this in the end to see how it feels. So I'm gonna have you grab a block. You guys can grab a book, a towel, whatever you have to elevate your foot. So you're gonna put your foot on the block, if one felt tighter than the other when you were doing the body scan, if you felt one side of your body having tension, I'm just gonna have you start with that leg. So, put one foot on the block, one foot back. You want all your toes on the ground, if you can, on that back leg. Your weight's gonna be on the front, and you're gonna drive your front knee forward. Feel that back leg stretch, and press up. Good, I'm gonna have you do 10 of them, just checking in on how you feel. Drive the front knee forward, and press. Awesome. Don't push your body further than where it can go. So if it's telling you, hey, I wanna stop here, stop. Come on up, good. Now when you're doing this, if you only feel this in your quads, I'm gonna really encourage you to put your hands on your glutes, put your hands on your hamstring, whatever you want to fire. And at the bottom, before you press up to that front leg, think about what you're trying to fire. So if Holly's hands are here, she pauses at the bottom, think about those glutes and push. Good, we got a little bit of shaking, so we see that things are activating. And at this point in time, because we haven't stretched at all, your back hip flexor, your back quad might feel really tight, and that's okay. By the end of this video, we're hoping that we've moved some things through there and it's feeling you have a lot more range. 
Now I'm gonna have you switch after this last rep. Awesome. So, front leg forward. You're gonna drive. Good, trying to keep that back leg down. Weight on the front leg. I'm gonna put my hand on my glute so I get it to fire and press. So we're using this as a baseline. Don't judge what you feel, don't judge what you're doing, don't judge if your calves are super tight because all you've been doing is running and not stretching at all. We're gonna try to change that. <laughs> awesome. If you feel one side being tighter than the other with your back leg, take inventory of that. That just means that hip flexor, that side body is probably a lot tighter and needs to be stretched first while we're going through all these. So again, just taking inventory, seeing what you feel and seeing what needs to stretch first. I'm gonna have them do a couple more. So with that, you should have a good indication of how tight your quads are, what your calves are feeling like, if you can even turn on your hamstring. Now what we're gonna do is go into the stretch portion. <laughs> we're gonna go into the stretch portion to try to get everything that might have been tight loosened so it can activate. So we're gonna start with your calves. I've never met anybody without tight calves. I'm gonna have them take their block or your book or your towel or whatever, put it against the wall. Put it down, yep, on the ground. And you're gonna put your foot, heel on the ground. You're pressing the ball of your foot into the block or the book or whatever you have, and you're holding. You're gonna lean that body forward into the wall, and you should feel a stretch in the belly of your calf right here. We're gonna hold for a minute. So if you haven't been able to tell already, this video is gonna be pretty slow. We're gonna have your timer to take you through the one minute series, everything we're gonna hold, and we're gonna see how long this actually takes. So, the timer's going. You're about halfway through. And you're holding. If you feel it really low in, your, in the bottom or your Achilles or your soleus, we can work that out as we go. You should feel it up through your whole calf. And we are going to switch and start the next minute now. Try to see which one feels tighter. And we're gonna do a true minute now. minute, yeah. You know, a, true, a minute without a timer is a tough one. But seeing where you're tight, seeing how tight this feels. Now, if it feels like it's really tight and it needs a, not, a lot more love than this, I would highly suggest to put this video on pause after you do one minute each side or just run it back two more times so that you give your each calf three minutes to really loosen up. Um, you can also add dynamic movement if that feels better for you. There's a lot of variations of this but just getting yourself set up to start with your calves because that's gonna be one of the biggest things that inhibits you from full range of motion. So we have 15 seconds left on the clock. And then after this, we are moving into your anterior tibs or your shins. For anybody who likes to run, bike, really do anything, your anterior tibs are pretty tight, I'm gonna guess. We're gonna start now. Come on down, you're gonna take your block. We're gonna put it on the mat. Now Holly's gonna do this on the ground. Adam's gonna do this elevated. I'm gonna do this in the side so you can see what it looks like. So you want your heels to be together. If you're on a block and you're elevated, you want it right under your knuckles. So heels together as much as you can. And you're fully extended here. And then you're gonna sit back, trying to keep your heels together. 
uh, as you sit down on your feet. They're gonna wanna pull apart. You might feel it really intense in the front of your shin. That's okay, we're gonna work on that breath starting now. So in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good, if you started it on the block and it feels super intense, I suggest going down to the floor. If you have any injury in your ankle, definitely starting on the floor. And you're just gonna hold. So once again, if you like to cycle, if you like to run, if you like to do any of those things, I highly suggest doing this before and after multiple times a day, as many times as you can, especially if you're having a really hard time staying in this position. Adam looks like he's having a great time. We're centering his breath. If you can't tell by how tan he is, he's been out in the sun a bunch, running a lot. So he's my inspiration for this. We've got five seconds left. Almost there, and come on out. How you feeling? Wonderful. These guys are gonna grab a couch for a quad stretch. You probably have a real couch or a bed or a wall. So what they're gonna use is this. What you're gonna use is something that you have. If you want to check, you're gonna turn it. No, you can be this way. You can face each other. Absolutely, face each other. <laughs> so you're gonna be on one knee. You're gonna have one knee forward, one knee down. Good. Yep, starting on the tighter quad for sure. Now, once you get into position, if it feels, if it feels really uncomfortable, I definitely suggest moving your knee a little bit forward. It might be too close to the wall or wherever you are. So you're gonna start, you're gonna exhale, you're gonna reach, lengthen all the way from the ground up. You're gonna inhale, back. <laughs> We're gonna start now. So I want you to inhale, good, and you're gonna exhale. Awesome. You should be feeling a stretch from about your knee all the way up top. It might be getting stuck in this quad area, it might be getting stuck in your side body, that's all okay. We're working on non-judgment, just let your body do whatever it wants to do. Awesome. You guys have 23 seconds left. We get a couple more reps in. Every exhale you do, try to go a little bit deeper if your body allows, and if it doesn't, that's okay too. Just let it do whatever it wants. Good, exhaling out of your fingertips, inhaling down. You've got five seconds left. Awesome. Switch. On to the next leg. <laughs> Woo. How you feeling? Wonderful? Awesome. Spicy? Spicy? I like spicy. <laughs> you ready? Doing the same thing, same breath. Here we go. You're gonna ex reach and exhale out. Good. You might find that your tighter side is your dominant side, probably because you're using it a lot more. Start with that side, but don't think that for every different stretch, it's gonna be tight on the same side. For instance, your quad might be tighter on your right side, your hip flexor might be tighter on your left side. Just feel where it is and respect where it is and go from there. Good, exhaling out. Awesome job. You're over halfway. If you feel like you're not feeling it deep enough, scooch your knee back a little bit closer to the wall or whatever you're using it'll be a deeper stretch in the quad. Good, you guys have 10 seconds left. So much oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds, and down. Come on, down. Now we're gonna move on to your hip flexors. So for this one, it's a similar position, just you're gonna be on the ground. So I'm gonna be sideways. You guys can face it forward. Awesome. So, one leg's in front, your back toes are flexed. Your back to awesome. 
And what you're gonna do is you're gonna drive your knee forward, squeeze your core, and feel the front of your hip stretch, and then bring it back to neutral. So we're starting now for one minute. Good, connect with your breath. Awesome. Try not to push your range further than it wants to go. So if you feel at some point you lose the stretch or you're not feeling it where you should, you might be going too far. So I would re recommend bringing it back. Feel it here? Feel it there, yep. Absolutely. Good. And if it feels like it might be trapped lower and you're not feeling it all the way up, that's because your quad is very tight. So I would suggest going back to the exercise we just did, maybe doing it one more time and then trying this one again to see if we, we can move it from your quad up into your hip flexor. And if you want to pose, just do what Holly's doing and put your arm, hand behind your head and go for it. <laughs> You've got about five seconds left. You can get a couple more in. Beautiful. And switch. <laughs> Let your energy flow through you however you'd like. And if it wants to get you to move and dance, shake a little bit, be a little bit weird, we highly encourage it over here. So we're gonna do the other side. You're gonna flex that toes for me. And if you by chance have a broken toe, you can keep it flat. You can keep it flat. So if your toe is broken and it won't flex, I would keep it down. We're gonna get the same effect. If you can't flex it, let's try. I'm flexing it. All right, here we go. <laughs> so we're gonna start now. Good. Awesome. Again, hip flexors, they're here. We're trying to feel it, and you might feel it all the way up. That would be awesome. If you add a reach, if you add something where you're bringing your arm up and driving even more, you're gonna feel it even bigger. If that feels like too much, back off. Good, you guys are about halfway. Awesome. Stay connected to your breath. And as we go along and we incorporate movement and everything like that, just don't do too much. Let's just be where we are, see what it feels like, and don't try to change it. Just let it be tight and say, okay, I honor that. I respect that you're tight. Let me keep stretching. Five more seconds. Awesome. Now we're gonna move on to your hip rotator. So we're gonna sit on our butt. Now for this, we're just gonna have arms behind your back. You're gonna bring your knees side to side without bringing your glutes or your butt off the ground. So you're gonna keep your butt planted. Try to bring your knees as close to the ground as possible. You're gonna feel it on the outside of your legs and then you're gonna switch sides. So we're doing like a tick-tock. We're gonna do this for one minute, starting now. So glutes on the ground, good. Try to drive those knees and then switch to the other side. Awesome. So Holly, Adam, and I have had a lot of experience in pushing our body to limits that it did not want to go to and learning the hard way that we should have probably listened to it in the first place and giving it, given it time to be honored and stretched and activated. So I've had three hip surgeries, Adam's broken like every bone in his body, and Holly's torn most muscles that exist. So with that, we have learned the importance of this, taking the time to breathe, taking the time to let our bodies do whatever they wanna naturally do before we wanna go and do anything else. We got about 10 seconds left. <laughs> and come on out. All right. <laughs> Next, we're gonna do adductors. So the adductors are the inside of your legs. I'm gonna, this is gonna look like frog position. So I'm gonna have these two face each other. Move whatever you need to out of your way. So your knees are gonna be apart. Your heels are gonna be behind your knees. Good, right behind is good. And you're going to reach. You're gonna thread your arm through whatever side you want. So let's start. Yep, you're gonna thread through. Breathe. <laughs> Good. You're gonna inhale in, and you're gonna exhale the other way. Nice job, Holly. 
Okay. <laughs> so you're gonna inhale in. Now you should be feeling this right in the inside of your legs. You might be feeling it up your lower back. You might be feeling like your shoulders are super tight. It could be a combination of all of them. So don't push it too far, connect to your breath. And when your body tells you to stop, don't go any further. Just try to go a little bit further the next time. Good. So big exhale out as you thread through. You've got about 20 more seconds left. Awesome. Adam, I'm gonna have you move your heels out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm very inspired by you. <laughs> you got about five seconds. Keep going. Awesome. And come on out. How are you feeling? How are those hips feeling? So good. So beautiful? Beautiful. Pigeon. I'm sure you've all heard of this before. We're gonna stretch your glute knee, your piriformis. I'm gonna have Holly stay on the ground and I'm gonna have Adam, who's a little bit tighter, be elevated. So if you have a box, if you have a couch, if you have a bed, cushions, whatever you wanna use, if you're feeling tight, you're gonna elevate your front leg. So you're gonna cross your front leg forward. If you're on the box, go ahead and bring it on. Good, you can sit your butt cheek on there to be comfortable. You wanna lengthen your back leg as much as you can. And get into that position where you feel the outside of your glute. So now you're gonna incorporate the breath. You're gonna inhale and give a slight twist. Go back to neutral, inhale. Light twist. Awesome. Now this one, your range might be really small and that's okay. If it feels like it's pinching anything, especially if you're on the ground, I highly suggest to elevate and try to keep your body as long as you can, letting the breath travel through you. So let your breath be your guide. So don't force it from your hands, don't force it from your hips. Let your breath guide you. So it's inhaling and exhaling it out as you turn. Rotating both ways, seeing what's tighter. You guys got about 20 seconds left. Awesome, turning the other way. Keeping your spine as high as you can as you go. Yep. Good job, Paul. 10 seconds. Awesome. If you don't feel a stretch, you need it a little deeper, bring your front leg forward. Go ahead and switch. Awesome job. Bring the other leg forward. If you are on the ground, you wanna make sure that your knee and the top of your foot is down. We're okay over here, we're gonna start. Here we go. Inhale in. Good. And exhale, keeping your spine as long as you can. Good. As you go, if you feel like you're loosening up a little bit, you can also move this heel a little bit forward. Get a bit of a deeper stretch. There it is. Inhale in. And exhale. You guys are about got about 25 seconds left. Holding for a minute seems monotonous a lot of the time, which is probably why a lot of people don't do it, and it's really hard to do on your own. So anytime you're feeling like you need to stretch, but you really don't want to hold it, and you're thinking that 10 seconds is acceptable, it's not, and you need to give your body a little bit more time to get going, turn on this video, stretch it out with us, and run it back as many times as you need. Come on out. Now we're gonna go on to hamstrings. So we have covered calves, shins, quads, hip flexors, glute med, piriformis, adductors, rotators. We've got hamstrings left. So you're gonna grab your block, you're gonna grab your book, whatever it is. You're gonna elevate your foot here. So you don't have to press too hard, we just want that foot flexed. Now, you're going to inhale in, so you can bring your arms up if you want to. And exhale down, push your hips back and reach. One minute on the clock. So inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. 
Now, as you can see, as we go, we're bending our knee a little bit, not keeping that stationary leg just straight. So that knee bend is gonna help you get deeper into the leg that is stretching. You should feel this all along the back of your leg. Great job. And as much as you can when you're doing it, you wanna try not to fully round your body. So you wanna keep that hamstring long and not being super bendy, encouraging that curve in your spine. We wanna keep our whole bodies long, letting the breath travel. So we're gonna hinge at our hips, push them back and come on up. Five seconds left, you can get about one more in and then we're gonna switch. I miscalculated that. We're gonna switch now. <laughs> Here we go, other leg, get that heel planted. You also might feel a lot, minute on the clock. You also might feel a lot in your calf as you do this with that elevation. That's okay too. Just needs to be stretched a little bit. If you feel like your calf's so tight that you can't get into your hamstring and all you're feeling is your calf, I recommend going back to the wall stretch, doing that for another minute or two, and then coming back to the hamstring stretch and feeling that loosening up your calf allowed it to travel all the way up so we can get your hamstring active as well. Inhaling in, connecting with your breath and letting it out. Yeah, you gotta let them up to the cosmos. <laughs> Bring that energy back down. Awesome. So after we're done with this, in about 15 seconds, we're gonna go into activation. So now that everything is loosened up and feeling a little bit better, we're gonna show you an exercise to activate your glutes and activate your hamstrings before you either go on to go running or do another video or just wanna get them going for the day. So come on out, guys. Thank you for being so absolutely wonderful, by the way. You're so mobile and so beautiful. We are gonna start with glute bridge. So I'm gonna have you guys lay on your backs and single leg glute bridge. So you wanna have, when you're laying on your back, go ahead. You're gonna have one leg planted and one leg in the air. So the leg that's in the air, don't have it be too high. You definitely want it on this angle where you're still using your core and you want your heel to be at the tips of your fingers. So put your fingers flat. It's good. Yep. So that's really gonna get your glute going instead of really, the further out that your heel is, the more you're gonna rely on your hamstring. So we're gonna get that heel close to our bodies. So driving your heel in, you can elevate your toes if you want to, you don't have to. You're gonna drive through your heel, put your hand on your glute and bridge up. Good, we are doing 10 of them. So we've got one, yep. Full hand, full hand. So when you come up, keep your core connected. If you feel like you can really flex your hips high up, your core is probably not on. Don't judge a small range of motion. That's actually a pretty good thing that you're connecting your core to your glute and everything else. But with every time you drive through that heel, you really wanna to try to connect to that glute. So whether your hand has to be on it, sometimes Adam likes to tap it, whatever you gotta to do to get that thing to turn on and know that that's what's supposed to be working. We've got five more. How are we feeling? Do we feel our glutes? Awesome, four more. On the 10th one, we're gonna hold for 10 seconds to really encourage that activation, and then we'll switch. We got three more. Good, keeping connection with your breath. Don't force anything. Just try to get it to move. Awesome. One more. Now we're gonna hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and switch. You feel our glutes, friends? Yeah, beautiful. We're gonna switch to the other one. So again, for setup, you want your heel at your fingertips, driving through your heel, you can lift your toes if that helps you, or you can drive through your whole foot, it doesn't really matter, just make sure you're not driving through the balls of your feet. So you're gonna lift one leg, it's straight out, you're using your core to help keep that leg up, you don't want any pinch in your hip flexors, good job, Adam, and we're gonna bridge. So drive through, come up, connecting your core, not going too high. Hand on the glute, tapping the glute, whatever you need to do if it's not turning on. 
one of the biggest things to connect your brain to whatever you're trying to do is literally just to put your hand on it and to think about it. It seems silly, but it's true. Just connect your energy to whatever you're trying to fire. Awesome. We're almost halfway. Again, at the end, we're gonna hold for 10 seconds, really getting that activation. Lift your toe if you can. There it is. Does that make it harder? Beautiful. Good. Lift your toe if you can. Awesome job. Making sure that your core is staying turned on so you don't flex your hips too much in the air and cause any low back pain. Good. We got two more. Good. And last one. Holding for 10 at the top. Don't come down. One, two, three, four, five. Dig in the shakes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Come on up and out. We feel our glutes, yes? Awesome, awesome. Let's get after those hamstrings. So we're gonna come on up and we're going to do a prisoner style good morning. So what you're gonna do is put your arms behind your head and I will demo from the side. So feet are shoulder width apart. Leg knees have a slight bend. You're gonna squeeze your core and with your core tight, chest up, you're gonna hinge forward. Feel your hamstrings at the bottom. Squeeze your hamstrings, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your core and come on up. Are we ready? All right, let's slight bend in the knees, tight core, hinge your hips back. Good, as far as you can go, if you, that's plenty. Now full tension and come on up. At the bottom, you should feel your hamstrings really working to help you come back up. Slight bend, hips go back. Good, and come up. Don't force your range to any more than it is. So if your core turns off when you're coming down, you've gone too far. You wanna keep it on and keep your range small if it has to be. Good, come on up. You can keep those elbows back. Yes, Holly, absolutely beautiful. Good. <laughs> and up. The more you squeeze, no, it's, he's doing great. The more you squeeze your glutes and your core, the more it's also gonna help. But you really should feel your hamstrings starting to shake a little bit. Good, we got five more. Keeping those eyes neutral is gonna be really important too. So if you're looking up and extending your neck too much, that's gonna to create too much tension. You wanna keep your head forward, eyes forward. And good. Two more. Keep working at them, those hamstrings look great. One more. Let's get them in sync for this last one. So you're both gonna be up, don't go yet. And down, last one. Come on up. Hamstrings, yes. Yes, awesome. So, we've gone through, we've stretched your whole lower body, we've activated the things that usually have a hard time activating, which are your glutes and your hamstrings, and now we're gonna end with two body scans like we started. The first one being your split squat. So you're gonna bring back your block, And you can do about five to 10 on each leg. We'll just do five to see how it feels. So you're gonna put your foot up just like the beginning. Start on the same leg that you started on the first time. Set yourself up. And you're gonna see if one, your back leg feels a lot more loose and that you have more range. Maybe your calf feels better. And two, if you have more activation. So when you drive forward, go ahead guys. Yep, driving that knee. At the bottom, think about squeezing your hamstring, your glute, and bring yourself back up. Good. Keep driving. Let's see if you have any more range. Awesome. Come up. Three more. Good, eyes forward, tight core. Two more. Give me a little bit of a pause at the bottom. Think about where you're driving through. Drive through your heel. See if we can feel that glute push up. 
one more. And switch. Do we feel more activation? Totally. Yeah? Feel looser in the back leg. That's the goal. We're hoping that it happens. We're gonna keep you connected to your breath. Here we go, driving forward. And if you feel like you have more range than this and the um, block is a little too much, you can go straight up on the ground. So you can remove the block and do the progression, which is on the floor. So Holly's got some great range of motion going on. Something like this, if your knee can drive that far forward, I would suggest you go on the floor. If you even want more than that, you can elevate your back foot. Let's see what she's got on the ground. Adam, we're gonna keep on the block. Yeah, he's doing great though. Absolutely. Two more. How's it feel on the ground, Hall? Dope. One more. And come on up. If you feel like you want more of that or you feel like you're using this before you're gonna do another video, you're gonna go on a run, you can do three rounds of 10. That would be awesome to get your body fully engaged. You're gonna feel a lot more with whatever you're doing. Um, and we're gonna end with another grounding breath. Same breath in and out, but we're gonna add movement. So you're gonna start with your arms to the sky. You're just gonna take a minute to inhale in. You're gonna pull everything from the sky, from the cosmos, the vine, God, whatever you wanna draw from, draw it in. You're gonna pull your arms down your body and once you hit your heart, you're gonna exhale out. You're gonna touch the ground, bend those knees with your hands on the ground, get yourself grounded, bring in the energy from the earth, inhale through your nose, bring your hands up your body. Once you get to your heart, exhale it out. We're gonna do this about five times. So if you don't wanna touch your body, just bring it close to your body. Inhale that energy in and exhale it out. Inhale it up through the ground. Exhale it out. Once you hit your heart, bring it up to the sky. Take it at your own pace. Inhale in and awesome. So this is a great breath just to connect you with yourself, connect you with the universe around you, connect you with everything. If you are trying to go do something, it's gonna give you a little bit of energy, kind of like a shot of espresso to get you going and get you moving throughout your day. Or if you're trying to do another workout, whatever that is, just bringing it all together with your breath. Good, I'm gonna get them synced up. Adam, keep your arms up. Holly, keep your arms up. Let's do it together. Bring it in through the cosmos. Out through your heart. Up through the ground. And out. Awesome. You can bring your hands down. You guys are done. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope you feel better. I hope you feel more present. I hope you're staying well. We miss you. Thank you.